You know I struggled with how to review the Intel i9 12th gen CPUs that are releasing today. Not because we didn't run a bajillion benchmarks and have a clear understanding of who is the best right now. Spoiler, Intel's back. But frankly, and I'm completely cool with this, I know I am not gonna be the first person you are going to watch a review of the new Alder Lake offerings from Intel. So instead of making the same old cookie cutter review that everyone else is going to make, I decided to do it a bit differently. So let's dive in right now, right here on Robitech. Well, if everyone is making a cookie cutter review, Roby, what's gonna be so different about your review versus everyone else's? I am just gonna answer the question, the one that everybody really wants to know. Does it make sense if you are building a new rig or if you're thinking about upgrading to actually jump to 12th gen Intel? To be honest, I'm not even sure this idea is insanely original, but I think most people, given the embargo, are gonna try and put their slight variation on the classic CPU review up on YouTube. And I just feel like what people really wanna know is, should I make the jump? Should I purchase the CPU? 12th gen Intel is a significant architectural leap in performance and efficiency over both 11th gen Intel and the current 5000 series of AMD Ryzen CPUs. In all but floating point math operations, which is going to potentially be an issue for certain math intensive data scientists. But frankly, if you're one of those people, you probably already know this, and this is such a slim thing to be worried about. So is Intel's new flagship processor and lineup of processors going to be a better option if you are purely focused on performance? We ran 17 productivity and CPU test specific benchmarks across seven different processors and five games across three resolutions across seven different processors to validate what you probably already know from every other review you've already watched when you got here. Hey, Intel did it. They are back on top for what will probably be about six months and then we'll hopefully see a leapfrog between AMD and Intel moving forward because, well, because competition is good. Oh, and by the way, at the end of this video, we're gonna show a bunch of graphs so you can validate that we actually did all the work. Now, as an FYI, we did run every single one of these benchmarks on Windows 10 with DDR4, making sure that we did an apples to apples comparison. No Windows 11 here. We wanted to make sure that when we did all the testing, we tested the same and the same across all of our different stuff because not everything worked the way it should in Windows 11. Intel's new architecture change with their P cores and E cores and the thread manager is just as innovative as the chiplets and infinity fabric that come with AMD. I love that we now have two viable options in the CPU universe and how I will more than likely have closer to a 50 to 50 ratio of Intel slash AMD builds on my show versus the 85% to 15% ratio that I currently have right now, fairing AMD. Now I know I'm simplifying things and that's okay. For most people, this is magic anyway. I'm just saying that Intel has done some really great work with their new 10 nanometer Intel 7 process and created something not only more efficient, but also with a ton of headroom that we can now use to truly overclock our CPUs again. And thanks to board partners like ASUS with their ASUS Intelligent Overclocking and EVGA with their robot overclocking on their Z690 ports, we are even going to allow the most average of PC users the opportunity to unlock 95% of the potential inside of their 12th gen CPUs. Don't worry, we got videos on this coming later. Now, before I get to the question of the video, there is one last part, and that's Windows 11. One space where we get the precursor to what could potentially be a Trojan horse for Intel, given how closely they work with Microsoft on integrating their thread manager tech into the OS for some big boosts on both performance and efficiency. AMD took a hit here already when Windows 11 released, which has since been fixed, but this shows where the legacy of Intel and Microsoft has potentially been flexed in Intel's favor. Okay, I get it, Roby. Intel's competitive, and, and frankly, they needed to be. So should I upgrade? Should my next new build be an Intel 12900K build or a 12XXXX build? Instead of waffling and saying it depends, I'm gonna go with the following answer. If you are willing to pay the price of a new CPU and also know more than likely for a few months that the supply is going to be tight, especially at the high-end i9, then yes, I think you should upgrade to 12th gen CPUs. You are going to be getting the best performance at the level, whether that's an i5, i7, or i9 CPU. The temperatures and overclocking potential you get should you get a K-SKU is huge. And tooling improvements on the Z690 boards for overclocking for both Intel and board partners is going to make this far easier and safer for your chips. There is also a very direct integration into Windows 11 that is going to be better and frankly, is going to save you both power and performance. But notice all the caveats. 
because there are a ton there. For all of the awesome that Intel's 12th gen is, that does not make Ryzen 5000s a slouch. And we've already begun to see that pricing response from AMD knowing that 12th gen is releasing soon. When you start to look at the value versus performance, AMD is going to be king here. And frankly, even with the performance over 12th gen, for most of us, the difference in real time isn't gonna be noticeable enough to make a difference, whether that's gaming, productivity, or content creation. So if you're on a Ryzen 9 5900X, or a Ryzen 5 5600X, or even an 11th gen 11700K, does upgrading to 12th gen make a lot of sense? I would say absolutely not. In fact, my rule of thumb, unless you just wanna be baller and spend all the money on the latest and greatest, is to skip at least one generation given the kind of performance leaps that we are now seeing with the recent releases of hardware. But Roby, what about PCIe Gen 5 and DDR5? Those are gonna be huge, right? I mean, I need it, don't I? Well, for DDR5, you should watch my video on who can actually use it right here. Spoiler, it's not for gamers. And for most of us, no, it's not gonna be a thing we need. Not right now. Now, PCIe Gen 5 is even more of a thing we don't need as we aren't even near the point of anything outside of storage read and write for mainstream customers that can even use the bandwidth of PCIe Gen 4. So as cool as these things are, and don't get me wrong, there will be things that will use them at some point and probably sooner than I think, but Honestly, 13th gen or 6000 series Ryzen will probably still use them as well. And frankly, we'll see a power performance boost there as well too. Well, Roby, final question. What about Windows 11? Well, what about it? <laughs> it's out and frankly, they're working the kinks up. Just ask AMD. Windows 11 is going to mature over time just like Windows 10 has. And that usually takes a service back or two. But I wouldn't say it's a reason to upgrade your PC unless there's something really lacking in your performance or that you really need from Windows 11. The integration with 12th gen is great and it will be there with the new architecture moving forward. So even following my rule of thumb on upgrading, it could still apply here. Okay, Roby, fine, I'm, I'm confused. So should I upgrade or should I not upgrade? What's the right decision? Ah! To put it simply, it's completely up to you. How is your current PC running? Are you having issues? Are games not where you want them to be when they run at resolution that you care about? Are render time slow? Is running applications an actual productivity issue? If your internal barometer says yes, then yes, you should upgrade. Then you need to ask yourself, do I wanna to spend top dollar, maybe more, on the latest and greatest, or get pretty dang close performance for quite a bit cheaper? If the answer to the first question was yes, and you weighed the benefits that I listed up above for 12th gen, then hey, go ahead, get one. If the answer was no, and the second option seemed more appealing, then go with Ryzen 5000, or even 11th gen Intel. There's killer deals on that right now, anyway. I hope this helped. And I know this isn't a traditional CPU review, but frankly, I really think this is a heck of a lot more practical. But don't worry, we're gonna show you all of the awesome graphs with some really awesome music that Connor picked out before we go. But before all that, I would love to know down in the comments below what you thought of this review. Was this useful? Was there stuff that wasn't useful? If I could keep it short and simple like this, what would you add? Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we either go live or post a new video on Robitech. Also, make sure you check out our amazing Discord and community members over at discord.gg slash Robitech. Talk about this, talk about tech, talk about PC builds, you name it, we got it. Now, for your viewing pleasure, enjoy all the benchmarks.